Hi, I am Andy Adams, the Director of Judges for the NCHA. I would like to welcome you to the NCHA Judges Educational Series. In this segment, we will judge cow by cow using the new 2024 Judges Card. The updated Judges Card has boxes for the first and second cow scores. With this updated card, you will fill out run content, penalties, and a cow score for the first and second cow. Remember, run content minus one point penalties should add up to your cow score. You then average the first two cow scores. In this case, that would equal a 73. The third line should tell why you went up, down, or stayed the same. In this case, the value of the run was increased by one point due to the plus in working time. Your run content should support your cow score and track the facts through your opinion. We want the card to tell the truth. When you tell the truth, it is easy for a contestant to understand what they marked and why they marked it. It also allows your weekend monitor to support your opinion through the facts. Okay, so now let's take a look at why we do not use a third cow score. So in this scenario, this rider worked his first cow for 25 seconds and had four pluses in run content and a cow score of 74. Cuts his second cow, works it for 20 seconds. Same scenario, has four pluses. He's sitting on a 74 when he goes to cut his third cow. Then the rider turns and chips his third cow, gets his hand down with three seconds. He has satisfied working time, so he has a check in working time, check on herd work. That run stays at a 74. Doesn't go up, doesn't go down. If we were to value that third cow, it would have to be a 70, because he didn't have any takeaways and he didn't earn any credit, so it would be a 70. If we average the 70 in with the 274s, that averages out to a 72 and a half, and that is not an accurate value on that run. In this segment, let's talk about run content versus major penalties. Run content is not always affected by a major penalty. Here are two examples to show how to mark your card correctly. For reference, both runs only worked two cows. So the first example is a run with a hot quit on the first cow that did not affect run content. Hypothetically, this would have been a scenario such as a slow walking hot quit. Control, I appeal, none of the run content boxes were actually affected by the hot quit. So the first cow was a four, second cow was a four. So this run would be marking a four. You take three off the end, that run marks a 71. So in the second example, we also have a hot quit on the first cow. The difference is run content is majorly affected in this hot quit. So hypothetically, this is a situation like a parallel hot quit. So basically the horse was taken down into the corner, um, was pushing up on a cow, was charging, he was forced off, he lost eye appeal, and he lost control. So we have several minuses, and that cow score, 66, reflects the run content part of it. And then the next cow was a good cow, was a 74, so that run would have been sitting on a 70. So you deduct three from the end of that, and that is a 67. So next we'll discuss how to fill your card out when a rider has a failure to separate on the first cow. So remember, run content minus one point penalties should add up to your cow score, and major penalties are deducted at the end of the run. We must also remember that the value of a run starts at 70 when the rider crosses the timeline. In both scenarios, we have a failure to separate on the first cow. Both have a cow score value of 65 based on a minus in herd work, control, degree of difficulty, eye appeal, and time worked. In the top scenario, the second cow score is a 75 based on run content. The average of 65 and 75 equals a 70. On the third cow, the value goes up four points based on run content to a 74. 
We then deduct the five point major penalty from 74 and that run will mark a 69. In the bottom scenario, the second cow score is a 71 based on run content. The average of 65 and 71 is 68. On the third cow, the value stays the same based on run content. We then deduct the five point major penalty from the 68 and that run will mark a 63. Your run content should support your cow score and track the facts through your opinion. We want the card to tell the truth. When you tell the truth, it is easy for a contestant to understand what they marked and why they marked it. It also allows your weekend monitor to support your opinion through the facts. In this first example, we have a class that is not highly competitive. These types of classes are hard to judge and even harder to place. So let's take a look at these two runs and obviously these are hypothetical situations. On the first run, the rider had a minus in herd work, cow score of 69, and that's all truthful. On the second cow, he had an F on the first cow, a check in herd work, a minus in control, and a minus in eye appeal, which was a 67 on that cow score. So with a 69 on the first cow and a 67 on the second cow, the average of those two is a 68. When that rider goes to cut his third cow, which he has a credit earning cut, and then finishes his run. So the value of that run would go up one point based on the credit earning cut to a 69. That is the real value. Because of the level of competition in this class, a 69 may be the best run we see. In order to give ourselves room for placing, we elevate the score to a 71. In a situation where we have elevated our score, for placing, we have to know the real value of that run. All right, so let's take a look at this second run. This rider had a miss on the first cow, had a check in herd work, just average, so the cow score is a 69. On the second cow, had a check plus in herd work and a check plus in courage, and the cow score was a 71. The average of those two would be a 70. So on the third cow, they had a check cut and no other value, so the score stayed the same. So the value of that run was a 70. So because the real value of this run is better than the real value of the first run, we would mark this run a 72 and go to the lead. In this next example, we have a class which is highly competitive. Both runs, have a real value of 75 at the end of their run. Both runs have control and eye appeal. The first run has more degree of difficulty and the second run has better herd work and working time. In this situation, you cannot tie these two horses. You cannot mark them both 75. So you have to make a decision on the second run, whether to go up or down based on which run content box holds more value to you. In this situation, herd work and working time was obviously more valuable than the degree of difficulty. What we do not want you to do is add a random plus just so you can go up. By remaining truthful and documenting the facts accurately, your opinion is explainable, understandable, and defendable. We are duty bound to call obvious penalties. If you have to ask yourself if it was or if it was not, it is not obvious. Remember, we are also duty bound to recognize credit earning opportunities. We want to thank you for attending this session of the Judges Educational Series.